Good morning, cultists! In our previous episode, we ended things off in the Bank of Arkham, where we're currently looking for the safe deposit box that this key number zero will fit into. And I have the Outsider and Eduardo with me. And I can't seem to... Yeah, I don't think Eduardo is meant to be a permanent um, companion or whatever. So let's continue this. Also, I've actually... Um, I kind of like started a new game just to see the uh, rest of the tutorial messages. And it seems like there's actually a way to kind of get out of combat in the middle of it, but still get all the experience points and loot that you've accumulated thus far? Yeah, something about like a progressive retreat or something like that. So maybe we'll try that out, because it seems like maybe we're not meant to, you know, endure very long royal rumbles and whatnot. Yeah, so I'm hoping that this door isn't... Ration consumed. That's nice. Can we go out the door now? Oh, that was weird. Wait, did everyone eat a ration or is it just me? Oh, we've been here before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Have I? Hmm. It looks... Oh. Turns out we hadn't been here before. Danforth's comp compass, morphine shot, camera, blank notebook. Holy shit, it's just like Christmas. Especially the uh, morphine shot. Um, of the student pilot Danforth of the Miskatonic Expedition. Interesting. I guess it's a crafting recipe or something then. And we've already read the bank manager's note, yes? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so we haven't actually been in this room before then. These cabinets house the customer account records. Great, so maybe you can just get some private information and then... Oh... Wow, there's a lot of stuff. Reggie's whiskey! Wow, wow, we wow. Didn't know that Reggie was getting into drinking, but there you have it. Uh, however, I try to ease it from my mind. I cannot forget the man's reply when I ask the significance of the number zero. Well, little man, every countdown ends with zero, does it not? The safe will be necessary after the end. The end of us all, that is. God forgive me, but I did ask as he... But I did as he asked. I concealed the accursed safe in the wall of my office two nights ago. It seems that damn motivational poster served a purpose after all. I swim in the, in the dark waters now, and God forbid should I vanish. Interesting. Hmm, and it seems to trail off. I see. Ah, so that's the uh, motivational poster then. The safe that should not be the... What? Huh? The haphazard effort to break up the hole in the wall suggests that someone wishes to conceal something behind it. Okay. Investigation? Oh, I see. You may try to find a weakness in the structure of the bricks. Proceed, and... Oh, I see this. You achieved to find a weak spot in the structure of the wall and successfully uncovered the locker numbered zero. So let's take a look at it. Right. Very cool. So that's how the investigation stuff works. Wait, did that work? Oh, there we go. A Cthulhu statuette and a dismal man's poem. Uh, what was that whispering? Dismal man's poem. This weird poem is maddeningly, maddeningly opaque, offering more in the way of confusion than clues. A memorabilia from Dismal Man. The soul of a scavenger of the seas shall be found inside the bottle of lead. The last destination of a bodiless starfarer shall be heard from a mouth not of flesh. A drop of swarming chaos shall be stolen under the ruins. Um, once halls of wisdom. And the conversation request. Oh, the outsider. And the book shall be read which should not be read. Only then may... Only then you may wish to call me by the timeless stones on the nameless isle. Only then you may wish to walk by me between the endless realms of pitch black. Interesting. Hmm. He's got surprisingly neat handwriting for someone who's, I don't know, known as the Dismal Man. Cthulhu statuette. A small gray-green stone idol of a grotesque winged creature. Grotesque? How dare you body shame Cthulhu? Unfucking believable That's it, I'm not playing this game anymore. Although you cannot be sure of its age, it has an aura of abysmal antiquity. Great. Huh. 
Okay, then. I don't know if there's anything else that we need to acquire from this look. Oh, about the recent event. Uh, let's talk to this guy. The disfigured occultist approaches you. Wait, so am I approaching him, or is he approaching me? Because I'm also a disfigured occultist. May I read the manuscript you found, stranger? My knowledge may help to illuminate its mysteries. Okay. He takes the manuscript as delicately as his claw-like hands will allow and reads it carefully. Hmm... What can be the scavenger of the seas? Perhaps a monster, a sea monster of some kind. I've read about all kinds of sea beasts in my dusty tomes. Gargantuan devils that can sink galleons with their feelers. Hunters of the dark waters with razor sharp teeth. Well, what was meant in the line about the bodiless starfarer? A bodiless starfarer. I know there are celestial beings of great power journeying across the endless blackness. Could it be one of them? Hmm, what do you think about the drop of swarming chaos symbolizes? The reference is too vague to make a reasonable guess, stranger. Stranger? My name's Fabrosi. I'll be screaming it tonight. <laughs> the book that should not be read? Why seek a book that should not be read? Such knowledge is often followed by damnation. I wonder if that's a reference to the Necronomicon. Hmm, where do you suppose we might find it? The depiction resonates as a tome of the dark arts to me. A native who is knowledgeable either in such artifacts or the occult itself can perhaps enlighten you further. Okay, another thing about the poem. Nope, that's it. I see. So we need to find someone who is either, I guess, native to, what, the sea? Um, I guess we can return, right? Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else that we need to search around these places. So it's good that it actually lets me just skip through the um, regular part of the of the dungeon, I suppose. Eduardo, I don't know if I need you to uh, follow me anymore. I'm pretty sure we got this on hand. So should I talk to him? Oh, I can tell him to heal himself. What kind of weapons can you use? Oh, no worries, senor. When it comes to it, I am good at killing. On my first fight here, I had to start with a club. Still keep it, see? He shows you a crude cr cudgel. It's my lucky club, El Palo. It is lucky because the man I beat with El Palo carried this. He shows you a stallion M1910, a state-of-the-art automatic pistol. See? La Diosa Fortuna is with me. Okay. Interesting. Um... Hmm... I mean, I guess I can afford to keep him around for a little bit longer. But... He is fairly expensive, so maybe I should just roll with the Outsider then. Alright, well, what are you doing in Arkham? Ah, it is a long one. Maybe you can buy me a drink after later, and I will share it with you, senor. Eduardo Canella goes to America. Small fisherman's sons become... Uh, becomes big and rich. He smiles bitterly. Hasn't happened yet. Okay, well, I don't want to dash his dreams, but, um... Hmm... Alright, Eduardo. You can leave. Your choice, senor. I enjoyed our time together. I'll be at the old deal if you need any of my services. Any of your services, you say? Okay, okay. Wait, did someone just say sex? Nice. Who's selling sex right now? Now, also, I wonder if we can visit the prostitutes for, um... For, uh, sanity and whatnot. Uh... Should I check this guy's stock again? I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should look into getting a gun or something. Mmm, show me what you got. Okay, uh, is there anything that I can sell? Um, what is this? What category is this? I'm assuming it's junk. Well, we shouldn't s uh, sell the keys, that's for sure. Because I'm pretty sure we can get a decent price for the for these things with, um, Itzhak. Or, wait, was it Stern? Or, no, it was Isaiah? Shit. I don't know what his name is. I don't know why the character from um, Schindler's List came to mind. Itzhak Stern. <laughs> Oops. My bad. Um, great movie. I mean, fucking sad as shit. I ball my uh, eyes out every time I watch it. But uh, anyways. Um, so he does have a handmade pistol. How much would that be? 70 sigs. Uh, hmm... I feel like now as an occultist, 
maybe I shouldn't be trying to use melee. But at the same time, can't really help it. I do love that melee. Hmm. Alright, well, that's fine. Everybody will have a gun. Well, you sure about that, sir? So what's our mission now? Because we found the poem. Was it meant to be a prophecy or a set of veiled instructions? Perhaps both. Huh. Investigate the statuette. Oh, the antique store. Right. And we still need to get Cornelius's uh, pocket watch from the old eel. Except I don't know how to get up to the second floor right now. Hmm. What are my stats at? Okay, we're getting fairly close to leveling up, so maybe next time I'll get another point into a speechcraft or something. Yeah. That thing. Oh, you're talking about the uh, statue, not um, not the outsider. Let me just check again. Maybe it's like story related. Maybe after we come back from the bank, the um, old eel will be available. Who's this? Hello, sir. Do you have a sig pal? Uh, no, I don't. But thank you. And what's this lady again? Uh, I think she's the former actress or something. Well, what are you doing in Arkham? Ah, I wish I really wish I knew. It's a mystery to me as well. I was waiting for the release of Hollow Hearts in a hotel in LA, LA when Burnt. Oh yeah, I think we already talked. Wait, didn't I already talk to him about this? I'm pretty sure I did. So why are these? It seems like. Oh, maybe it's just every time you have a conversation with them. Who's this guy? See a tipsy, talkative-looking blonde man leaning against the bar. It's Gary Oldman. His reddish eyes roam the room as if looking for someone. Sorry to bother you, sir. But may I ask a question? Uh, sure. I see you've just arrived at Marino's fine establishment, and I was just curious whether you happened to see a rustic-looking fellow hanging around here. A uh, rustic-looking fellow? No, I didn't. You didn't? Good. Must be imagining his primitive gaze upon my back. Let me introduce myself. My name is... I'm Stanley Fredkin. I'm a long line of people who want to be um, named Fred, but I couldn't, which is why I'm a Fredkin. I used to be a lecturer in the li literature department at Miskatonic before committing wholly to my true intellectual passion, the study of folklore. But we can talk more about me later. In, my, in the meantime, may I buy you a drink, sir? Sure. He turns to Marino. Some whiskey for this fine gentleman here, and not the usual rot gut you serve. Real whiskey, if you please. Here you go. Here you go, sir. Stanley raises his glass and takes a big sip of Marino's questionable whiskey. Now, what were you talking about? Mmm... Why are you looking for the rustic man? I'm afraid he's the one who's looking for me. I've had some minor problems with my current employer. Nothing I can't resolve, of course. But I suspect he may have sent that illiterate to find me. Who is this employer? He's, uh... He's a foreign investor who is interested in my advice. I see. Another thing. So, maybe it's not the, um, the mobster then. Of course, sir. I'm glad of the opportunity to have an intellectual conversation with another sophisticated mind. I guess you've never met me before. We're in this town, huh? But enough about me. What's on your mind? Also, uh, let me know if the audio is a little off. I think I somehow fucked up the settings in between episodes. So they kind of like defaulted to normal. Um, so I don't remember what the previous audio settings were, but I'm hoping that it's not too loud nor too quiet. But uh, you guys, let me know. Mm, you mentioned the Miskatonic. Did you mean to? Did you mean the university on Main Street? No, I meant the river. Don't people learn about major wa water bodies in school these days? Huh. Forgive me. Sometimes a sarcastic Stanley takes hold. Yes, I used to work at Miskatonic University. It is no boast to say I was a mighty fine instructor during my time at the university. What a sad day it must have been while the when the students learned I had chosen the path of wandering folklorist. Hmm, what have you been studying lately? Oh, I see that I've aroused your interest. Maybe I've aroused something else in your pants, too. I've been known to have that effect on people, being an intellectual inspiration and all. To get to your question, I've been to... I've been in Vermont recording the legends of the Winged Ones of the Hills. A very profound topic indeed. Wait. 
that was another story by Lovecraft, right? Where I think a journalist goes to some very backwater inbred hills that's being terrorized by some kind of monster. But wait, I don't think it was Wing though. Hmm, he might be talking about the Biaki. I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of things with wings in the uh, in Lovecraftian lore. From the Panacook myths to the legends of Governor Wentworth's uh, colonial grants, you will find mention of these winged beings from the skies. Whispers of these creatures may found may be found even in the folklore of the distant Himalayas. Maybe he's talking about the Elder Things? There must be a reason for these beliefs to be so widespread, right? And what do you suspect is the reason? There are things I'm willing to share for the benefit of the public good, and there are things that I'm not. I'm fascinated by the mysteries of the unseen world. Pray continue. Ah, there we go. We better leave this topic behind, sir. By the way, have I told you about my latest book on Kingsport folklore? Uh, please don't. No, you haven't. It was very well received in academic circles. Actually, I think the... The, um, junk peddler was selling that. It was actually very well received in academic circles. And among more common readers, too. Must have heard about it, right? Um... I'm sorry, but... I don't read that much. You don't? That must be true, else you would have heard of it. Maybe I should have gotten the book, damn it. Now, what were you talking about? Uh, so you study folk tales. New England folklore, to be specific. I'm sure you've heard of my book. Yeah, okay, well, I haven't read it, I'm sorry. I'll try to read it next time we, um, before we talk. Is there anything you're not good at? Other than the vulgar athletic disciplines? No, I don't think so. I've always uh, maintained that with a healthy brain, you can achieve anything. Remember these words, sir. Invest in your brain. Ha, huh, good one. But I'll keep that in mind in this savage world. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, what? He didn't appreciate the... <sighs> Unbelievable. Fine, whatever. Goodbye. So soon? All right. Uh, leave, sir. Your choice. He quickly tosses the remaining whiskey down. You're no different, of course. Wait for him to continue. Um, sorry? Can't you recognize a person of natural quality? Do I have to tell you that out of all these people, all these clueless illiterates, I, Stanley Fredkin, have possibly discovered an escape from this hellhole. I was chosen. Um, what are you talking about? He suddenly comes to a sentence senses. Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Damn this vile whiskey of yours, Marino. I'd better take my leave. Alright. Bye. I guess. Hmm. Interesting. I guess we'll try to talk to Gary Oldman again later, but sure. Uh, can I rest in the attic? Oh, there we go. Of course. I hope you enjoy, uh... Hey, what was his voice again? Of course. I hope you enjoy your special suit, the royal attic. He goggles for a while. After getting no response from you, he quickly down gets down to business. 46, Konodo. And make it quick. If I say I don't have that much, will he be pissed off? I don't have that much. And I recommend hitting the good old streets. Why do you take my time for this, Tipo? Hmm. Alright, then I guess we will take the, uh... The attic. Unless... Maybe we can just go there regardless? Nope. Okay. Fine. I hope that the reward that we get for this is more than 40 sigs. Hmm. Alright, here we go. Sure, sigs lost. It's fine. And maybe I'll talk to this lady and finally get to her doing her mission too. Yeah. Oh my god, holy shit! You fucking scared me, dude! My god, I thought you were some creepy bastard. Well, a creepy bastard that's not on my team. Ah, uh, Cornelius' pocket watch. And I guess since we're here, we might as well rest up, right? Cries of the Mark. Yeah, uh... So let's go for some psychological treatment. No, wait, for the outsider? No. Oh, occult research. Okay, let's do that. Mm, I guess if we hadn't taken uh, Depraved Occultus, we could have actually done this a little bit faster, but whatever. And let's go for some medical treatment of... Yourself, an outsider, can you also do- 
Really? You can both research the same thing? Hmm. Interesting. Alright. But for now... Yeah, let's try that out, because I don't know what else I could uh, replace this with. Not much, I don't think. Let me see. Scouting, easier progression escape. No, yeah, there doesn't seem to be much else I can do. Go ahead and heal yourself. Fantastic. So we are at full sanity. I don't know what that is. Made progress in the occult research of Danforth's compass. Discovered the power of Danforth's compass. Gained some sanity from doing um, esoteric or ar arcane research. Discovered the malediction of Danforth's compass. Hmm, and they're all back up to full health. Great. So, what's up with Danforth's compass then? Uh, so power, increased world map speed, lower sanity gain from resting. Oh, I see. So it's an offhand item. Where would that go then? Here? Hmm. Maybe for now we're okay, because I don't know if we've actually done any world map uh, traversal yet. Sure. Okay, well, hopefully I don't need to come back into this attic. Uh... Who's this guy again? No one. Gotcha. These guys aren't in aren't anything special either. Hmm. If you, you can join me if you want, Sonya, if you feel up to it. Alright, Sonya, join me. A faint flicker of anticipation appears momentarily in her dark eyes, which was all it took for you to know that she'd accept your offer. Thank you, sir. I had a vague feeling you'd come back. Feeling a little embarrassed. It'd be foolish and discour discourteous of me to refuse the invitation of someone who's my only link to Randolph. I hope this time I won't become as much of a burden to you. Nonsense. I'm intrigued as, intrigued as you are um, about Randolph, shall we? Oh, I'm sure that'll hardly be the case. Let's go. Yeah, I'm intrigued about uh, Randolph. Oh, really? She's an actual companion. I thought she'd just be like some character that, you know, fucks around and all that su uh, such. Um, she's already... Right, because she's catching up to our levels. Mysterious Dodge Horror Rider. Grants a small protection against su supernatural effects. Mysterious Dodge and Trick Shot. Sonya deceivingly fires a pistol at her opponent, reducing the reaction values. Available at optimum range. Hmm... Oh, look at that! She's actually, um, pretty good at shooting and all that such. Interesting. So maybe firearms and investigation is where we should be um, putting our points into. Okay, so let's go for... Break shot? I think? Sure. I think that's good for now. So, she's an investigator. Sonia Green Carter. Right. Which I believe may have been H.P. Lovecraft's uh, wife. So I think um, Randolph Carter is actually like a reference to himself. Yeah, because I think he's one of the uh, few recurring characters in uh, all of Lovecraft's works. Fantastic. Uh, do we need to check anywhere else? I think we're good for now. So back to... Return to Cornelius or do what you like with the watch. Hmm... I don't know what repercussions there are to being evil in this world, so... Uh, what's going on there? Seems a little odd that I can't see, uh, click on stuff sometimes. So... I'm gonna give Cornelius his watch back, and who's this man? It's Indiana Jones. A rustic looking... <gasps> it's the rustic looking fellow! A rustic looking fellow approaches you with a note in his hand. He pulls, pulls, puts the small folded paper into your hand. Hmm... Who are you? He wanders away without a word. I see. And the outsider has a conversation request. Oh, they're the cultists. Oh no. What are their dogs doing? Oh no. No! Cornelius! The blood and soul of this withered wretch is an insult to the old ones. 
just finish him and leave his corpse to rot. No, Cornelius! He never got his watch back! Oh no! Why? At least they had dogs. That was nice. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, outsider? Sure, let me talk to you. The outsider speaks at the... as the rustic-looking man leaves. Was he a servant carrying the word of his lord? Um... Last time I saw his master, he looked to be in considerable trouble. Guess we'll learn more about them soon. Ah, shit, I didn't read the note. Um... His master, I guess, is the dismal man? Last time I saw his master, he looked to be in considerable trouble. What? Eh? Sorry, let me read this note that we just got given. Stanley Fredkin's note. I finally found- Oh, it was Stanley's! I finally found the exit that I mentioned to you. I can get us out. Meet me at my house at number uh, 39 Main Street, Stanley Fredkin. In oh, what? Wait. Why the fuck do I have a gun all of a sudden? Oh, it's meant to be Sonya's. Gotcha. There you go, miss. She is now armed and ready to blast people right in the uh, butthole. And I'm gonna give you some laudanum shots, too. Just a couple. Mmm... Barbosi's got a couple and the Outsider's got a couple- uh, got three. Oh fuck! Dude! Cornelius lies bleeding on the cold, besmirched ground as waves of agony convulse his body. Riddled... Dis... Biteously. He perhaps would have already given up his last breath but for your timely arrival. Gagging on his own blood, he can hardly talk. You've come, thank the good lord, but my time is up, I'm afraid. <gasps> Listen to me. The watch is of no use to me anymore. I, I, I've lived for and I'm about to, to die for my c c convictions. Come to think of it, I don't regret it. I was tired of living like a rat anyway. <coughs> You can keep the watch, but promise me this. You're going to use it for something you believe in. Um, very well, Cornelius. I'll do what I can. I promise on my honor that your goodwill shall not be abused. You paid the price for running your mouth, Cornelius. Goodbye. I can no longer be involved in your affairs. Mm. I don't know about this. I think let's just say I'll do what I can. That's good too. With his dying breath, he struggles to utter his last words, but his broken body has had enough. With a quiver that lasts but a moment, he finally dies. Oh shit, can I pick his body clean? Ah, uh, we're losing more sanity. Bearing witness to the brutal stabbing of Cornelius has planted in you a concrete idea about the consequences that may await those who get marked by Arkham's new ruling elite. I see... Hmm... I was hoping that we could join the cultists, but... It might not be possible. Yeah. Huh, okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. And I might also need to pick up some more uh, rations. Oh, so the antique store. Um, is there another store around here? No. Wait, have we spoken to this guy? I don't know if we have. He doesn't ring a bell, that's for sure. And I guess that's how we get to the outside world. Uh, can I speak to this guy again? Dot, dot, dot. I guess not. Because they do have a little bit of psychology now. This is the guy in that black face, right? Oh, there we go. Let's observe this man's behavior. As you watch him continue his bizarre show at the expense of his dwindling psych physical health and... Uh, physical health, patterns of severe self-punishment are revealed. A deep sense of guilt may have triggered this malady. Hmm, will you cut it out, please? I see. I don't know if there's a way for me to help this guy. But, um... Maybe once we upgrade our psychology a little bit more? Perhaps? Yeah, sure. But, you don't want to go there. Why not? What's wrong? Outsider, what's wrong? Why don't you want to be here? Come on, dude. Don't be like that. Alright, well, I'm assuming that this is going to be another lengthy conversation, so I'm going to end the episode off here for now. We'll come back tomorrow, and then we'll speak to... 
I forget what this guy's name was. Schmidt, that's it, Schmidt. Yes, we'll talk to Schmidt and see what it can tell us about the statuette and uh, maybe even the poem. Or, yeah, and we should look into selling the keys too. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast!